Good morning, everyone, again. Let's look at another game in the Danish gambit, this time with Leela Chess playing white against Stockfish. So this is Leela ID 467, part of the games of the gauntlet set by John D for very thematic, aggressive openings, which you can see on Stack Exchange. I'll give you the link in the description if you want it. Uh, so this very, very aggressive set start position, D4, E takes, C3. England are also doing well in set pieces at the moment in the World Cup, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so here, D takes C3. Uh, now, Alekhine's variation is Knight takes C3. There's, there's an article on Wiki which uh, gives a basic uh, introduction to this. Now, this Bishop C4 is known as the Linden variation. And I looked him up on Chess Gamescom. He was... Uh, born in Sweden, an early adopter and analyst of the Danish Gambit. He moved to the USA in 1876 and died in Philadelphia. There are 11 chess games at chessgames.com if you want to check uh, him out, this guy Linden. So this continuation, we have the very greedy looking C takes B2, Bishop takes B2, Knight C6. Now, Lila doesn't mind about the check. She doesn't actually play A3 like him. Stockfish did. We have knight f3, which is thought to be like the main move. So this check is actually played. Knight c3, knight f6. Both sides castle king side here. And now we see knight d5. So white has a certain amount of dynamic compensation here. Black plays bishop e7. If we look at this for a moment, knight takes d5, e takes this position. Uh, it should be okay after queen d4 for white, at least equal here. White's got good compensation there. So we have actually the bishop going back to e7, queen c2, uh, d6. The, if you want to look at the very detailed variations, by the way, check out my uh, the link in in the comments. Uh, if if we look at instead of d6, knight takes for a moment. Here, yeah, this knight takes uh, e takes this this position should be okay as well for white, especially knight a5 is particularly dangerous because of g7 and a5. Uh, that would be just setting black up to lose here, like for example, like that. But if um, knight b8, then that should be again d6 with with a move like d6 white should be fine there's ample compensation so yeah black's treading very carefully d6 good move rook a e1 knight g4 now curiously you might think well the rook actually just goes back to d1 now it has kind of committed this knight to make use it make use of being on g4 in some way uh, we have bishop e6 bishop drops back here bishop b3 a5 a3 knight f6 so the knight doesn't use the e5 square especially with this rook coming down that d file against the queen so this seems safer knight f6 rook f e1 knight d7 bishop a2 bishop g4 and now here guess what Leela plays in this position okay she positively invites black to do structural uh, damage. But this would be okay for white, it seems. Black actually played this. On bishop takes f3, this position, you can see that maybe the g file is going to be dangerous later. But also in the shorter term, there's things like this. Uh, and the, look at the bishops. And yeah, if white ends up using the g file either via g1 or a rook left it it does seem quite dangerous so that's at least even uh, in a practical sense so anyway bishop h5 is played here and we see actually a rook left here rook d3 knight c5 rook d e3 so let's take stock of this gambit here for a moment black has seven of the eight pawns available white has gambited earlier two pawns and is currently on five pawns. So white is actually two pawns down. But what white has, what Leela has, is this lovely bishop pair. 
and this lovely knight actually on d5 which means this bishop isn't so easy to parry in the short term so there's, there's attacking pressure here what does white need to do here to do something with this initiative let's see what Lila does knight e6 does protect g7 in advance so queen c3 is not threatening mate now clearly but it is tying down the knight and actually black plays bishop takes f3 now and Leela, on the prospects, um, um, potentially, of this bishop being useful, uh, it's a bit stuck, actually, at the moment. Actually takes off the bishop. You might find that a little bit surprising. Instead of taking on f3, takes off the bishop on e7. Uh, so we have queen takes, and now rook takes f3. So we're left with an interesting imbalance two bishops against the two knights white's rooks are slightly more versatile and can be aggressive so in fact you could say that the extra mobility of the white rooks could in conjunction with the bishops create some potentially damaging weaknesses i think that's the one thing we we can say here can it be demonstrated we we see now king h8 rook f5 and there does seem to be a plan afoot here involving the h7 soft spot that isn't protected by any piece apart from the king so that would be an ideal candidate soft spot in, in my view here intuitively black plays f6 uh which okay it does have a big downside but what if if we look at something else like rook g8 queen g3 we can see the h7 soft spot uh could be a big problem pretty soon if white maneuvers around here there's a threat building up it seems I don't know the Queen's covering h4 at the moment but this could be really dangerous with Bishop e1 and e5 this this starts to look very very scary this kind of position with e5 coming uh, black could get blown to bits this is just an example of how black could get blown to bits with e6 liberating both bishops against the King you can see that the rooks are working well to make sure the bishops uh, are going to be crushing you know, for example like that or uh, knight f6 there's queen f5 both bishops and everything else is working well for the attack here so there's big attacking compensation uh, so anyway so f6 you might think this is committal that's why uh, yeah, I had a look at rook g8 so queen g3 we have queen e8 uh, so that covers the h5 square clearly against the rook h5 uh, so if we just have a look at the dangers of just allowing rook h5 just for a moment uh, you can see that actually with queen g6 in particular with that pin pawn this is going to be fatal uh, for example e5 here bishop b1 is at least winning material if black has to play f5 this is a big advantage for white so there's a big initiative here Black has to be very careful with the increased pressure of white's pieces. So Queen E8 does seem a cautious, logical, defensive move. Now, Leader really wants to put pressure on H7. To do that, having a battery of Rook and Queen would seem a logical thing to try and aim for. And this next move does seem to tick that box that white wants to, uh, you know, double on the H file. Now here, Knight C5 was played. Uh, that knight is a liability it's stopping black from playing like queen g6 because here bishop takes e6 so the knight moves out of the way so there's potential for queen g6 potentially queen h4 though now white is installing this battery Leela is installing her battery on h7 knight e5 rook h5 the battery is installed and here it's already pretty unpleasant for black black might actually be lost here even though two pawns up if you look at this position uh, in great detail the rook mobility with the bishop power is, is the real killer here this rook can come in and potentially kick this knight and potentially e5 we've potentially got the bishop the light square bishop working on both these attacking diagonals so anyway yeah it's a very dangerous precarious position already uh, if for example h6 then bang rook takes h6 and queen h6 is mate 
So very precarious. Um, so we have Queen G6. And now yeah, this rook left, rook e3. So rook g3 looks absolutely gorgeous to be able to play with tempo. Uh, there was also the technical matter of knight f3, by the way. So if bishop e1, bang, knight f3, winning white's queen. But Lila did spot that. Yeah. <laughs> so rook e3 is attacking and defensive. Uh, so knight goes back, bishop b1, building up for potentially uh, one day e5. At the moment, it's with check here. So, but in principle, yeah, this e5 looks like a dangerous idea coming up. We have h6. Now, bishop c1. Now, here, this is e5 with a vengeance because it's not a check. Yeah, because the bishop's covering the check. So e5 with a vengeance, try and break, break down the black king. Could be on the cards. Could be even more on the cards. Of the knight e6, that isn't played though. No, we still have more pressure being built up on the black king now with rook g3. And in fact, there's so much pressure here now that black has to give uh, material up to try and stave off getting absolutely battered. If, for example, queen h7, bishop takes h6 is just absolutely crushing. For example, like this, just winning the queen. And um, if uh, g takes, yeah, just winning the queen, e5 even, just to celebrate winning the queen in style. So, yeah, black is giving up a piece here to stave off the absolute battering. So f4 winning a piece, that pin knight. FG, FG, does black have enough pawns for the end game to compensate for the piece down? Uh, so queen takes g5, queen takes rook, g takes g5. Um, we do have rook f5 now inviting more simplification. Rook takes, rook takes. The rooks just come off here. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, this scenario does seem very favorable for white, potentially. But uh, are these pawns dangerous? King e3, king g8, king e4. With the king right in the center now, there's a lot of pressure on the central squares. King f6, this looks very bad. Of the bishop c3, black's in a kind of zugzwang now. And let's go the uh, a5 pawn and plays h h5. If It doesn't matter if b6, it's just horrible. Bishop b1, for example. And black's in uh, a kind of zug swang. Because if d5, then there's king f4 with bishop e5 next. Doesn't matter about g5, we've got fg, uh, the knight's pinned. So it's it's a zug swang position. In any case, if the king has to step back, then we just take on e5, and that's going to be easily winning. So the, the pawn's just left to be taken, um, uh, potentially. Uh, sorry, king f4 was played here. It wasn't wasn't taken immediately. Instead, King F four. Uh, same kind of thing though. Now we have H four, uh, and now Bishop takes A five. Bishop drops back. This is just hopeless. It's just a piece up, really. And here the game was adjudicated right here. C five game adjudicated as a win for White. Uh, White can do anything really. Bishop B one, and then. A4 doesn't matter about these pawns, just come back to stop them. And the bishop's holding the C pawn, they've got outside pass pawn winning here, absolutely winning. So, uh, yeah, this showed Leela Chess with the uh, Linden variation of the Danish Gambit accepted. So, a very aggressive variation indeed, where white sacking two pawns for a big initiative. It's what is possible with that initiative, the extra rook mobility in my view, made uh, the bishop pair more more dangerous than usual. And once the cracks started appearing in black's defences, white was going to get the material back with interest at least. So a very interesting, very aggressive Danish gambit on the white side. Lila Chess playing on the white side of this gambit. So I hope you enjoyed this game and the other counterpart game, uh, which was earlier. I'll give you a link in the comments in the description. Okay, thanks very much. Comments, questions, likes, appreciated, of course. Cheers then.